Hello students, welcome to EPG Partshala. In this module, we will study about fly ash utilization and the rules passed by government of India for fly ash utilization or fly ash management. You know that fly ash is a waste product or some people call it as a byproduct of the thermal power plants where coal is used as a fuel. Fly ash cannot be disposed in open because if fly ash is disposed in, in open, it may pollute water bodies, it may pollute soil, it may pollute air as well as if it is disposed in open, this may cause health problems to the people living in the surrounding areas. So, with this background, the learning objectives of this module are to gain knowledge on the various sources of fly ash generation, properties of fly ash and characteristics of fly ash. Second objective is to understand the fly ash utilization methods and third objective is to familiarize with the fly ash management rules passed by government of India. Coal is a fossil fuel primarily used for power generation. You know about 65 to 70 percent of power in India is generated using coal as a fuel. Globally coal reserves have been estimated at over 861 billion tons. India accounts for 286 billion tons of coal reserves. Other countries which are having major chunks of uh, coal are United States, China, Australia and Indonesia. In India, it has been predicted that coal is going to exist for here for another 4 to 500 years. When coal is going to exist, exist for so longer periods, we can presume that thermal power generation is going to continue in India for many decades in the future. So, because of this, we have to plan for the fly ash management, otherwise the day is not far away when this fly ash will be depositing or entering into our houses. Coal meets approximately 33.3 percent of global primary energy needs and coal is used to generate about 42 percent of world's electricity. In case of India, this figure is up to 70 percent. World over, pulverized coal fired boilers are extensively used for power generation. Now, what is pulverized coal? Actually, when coal is used in thermal power plants, this coal is powdered. The coal is powdered to the size less than uh, 0 0.5 mm and this pulverization of coal is done so that all the coal get utilized in the kiln. Otherwise, if coal will not be powdered, a significant fraction may of coal may be wasted. This figure shows coal mines in India. India has fifth largest coal reserves in world of the total reserves, 88 percent are known cooking coal reserves. As I told earlier, about 70 percent of India's coal production is used for power generation with the remaining being used by heavy industries like uh, metallurgy related industries and cement industry. In financial year 2015 and 16, the coal consumption for power plants was about uh, 536 million tons. This figure shows different coal mines in India. So, dear students, the coal which is generated at different mines that is different in characteristics and what will be the characteristics of ash? They will largely depend upon the physico chemical nature of the coal. So, please read about the kind of coal that is produced by from different mines in India as well as also large quantities of coal are imported in India for the thermal power plants. Also learn that we import, we import coal from which countries in India and what is the physico chemical characteristics of that coal and what are the characteristics of the fly ash that is generated from the Indian as well as imported coal. In India, coal based thermal power plants account for about 60 to 70 percent of 
electricity installed capacity. The India's coal is characterized by high ash content and the ash content in Indian coal is 30 to 45 percent in comparison to the imported coal because in imported coal ash content is 10 to 15 percent. The Indian coal has other useful qualities uh, like Indian coal has low sulfur content less than 0.5 percent. Indian coal has low iron content, low chloride content, high ash fusion characteristics are there in the Indian coal. But there are certain reports which report that Indian coal has higher mercury content. Please read about this also. The quality of ash in coal varies from plant to plant depending on type of coal used in that particular thermal power plant. Source of supply of coal and also on the type of combustion used by the thermal power plant. During financial year 2015-16, the coal based power plant installed generation capacity in India was 1,45,044 megawatt. Now this uh, installed capacity is more than 2 lakh megawatt from 151 coal station this was the this is the number of coal based thermal power station in 2015-16 now the number may have increased and coal consumption was in different thermal power plants of India about 536 million tons. The average ash content of the coal used in power plants during the financial year 2015-16 to 16 was 30. 2.94 percent. So, from this you can find out by doing the simple calculation that about one third of the total coal that is used remains as fly ash. Now, let me come to the fly ash. Primarily, the ash is categorized into three categories and these uh, three categories are fly ash, bottom ash and Economizer ash. Fly ash is very fine material and generic name given to ash which rise with the flue gases and captured by electrostatic precipitators. Bottom ash as name is indicating this ash which is coarse in nature and do not fly with flue gases and this is collected from the bottom of the boiler. Third is the economizer or APH ash. The characteristics of this ash are very similar to bottom ash and recovered from the economizer hooper and APH hooper. This uh, economizer ash or APH ash is very small in quantity. Depending upon the source of coal, the composition of fly ash and bottom ash vary considerably. The general ratio of fly ash to bottom ash varies between 70 to 80 percent to 20 to 30 percent. As per Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change notification on November 2009, the term fly ash means and include all ash generated such as electrostatic precipitate ash, dry fly ash, bottom ash pond ash, mound ash, etc. In financial year 2015-16, the total fly ash generation in India was about 176.74 million tons that is approximately one third of the total coal used for thermal power generation in India. Let me discuss some physicochemical properties of fly ash. Fineness, specific surface of fly ash is in the range of 250 to 270 meter square per kilogram. Particle size, particle size as retained on 45 micron sieve that is in the range of 40 to 50 micron size. Compressive strength of fly ash is 85 to 90 percent. The physical properties of fly ash largely depend on it on the type and operation of coal mill and operation of burner. The fly ash 
collected from electrostatic precipitator is somewhat grayish white white in color fine having fine particle size less unburnt carbon the unburnt carbon content is usually 0.5 to 0.5 percent and this fly ash has good pozzolanic properties that is self cementing properties so in presence of water can get strength and may solidify when bottom ash is slightly black in color coarse particle size and higher unburnt carbon 2.5 to 3.5 percent having less pozzolanic properties the huge amount of fly ash generation creates a problem for ash disposal the ash disposal requires large land parcels as ash ports higher amount of water consumption is there in conventional slurry streams because ash is to be kept wet to avoid fugitive emission higher cost on energy consumption and maintenance for ash conveyance through pipelines so there is a need to utilize ash instead of disposal on the ash we have to look as a resource we have to look on the ash as a future instead of a problem instead of a pollutant let we have a look on the ash utilization scenario the ash utilization scenario in india uh, in financial year 1996-1997 the ash utilization was just 9.63 percent uh, in that year about 6.64 million ton ash was utilized in different activity but with the time this is continuously growing and this has reached up to 60.97 percent that is 107.77 million tons in financial year 2015-2016 still we are not using 100 percent of the fly ash some of the fly ash is still deposited in the ash ponds so now is the time when we should utilize fly ash although fly ash utilization has increased more than 16 times in the uh, in the period from 1996 to 2015 16 this table shows the physical properties of fly ashes which are produced using different types of coal from this table you will find that the specific gravity of the fly ash that is produced by burning the subbituminous coal is lesser as compared to the bituminous and lignite coal similarly if we come to the fineness is more in all kind of coals in wet sieving as compared to the dry sieving here also you will find that in subbituminous coal fineness is less as compared to the bituminous and lignite coal if we come to the specific surface area the specific surface area of the fly ash varies from 215 to somewhere 450 square meter per kilogram again what will be the surface area that depends upon two three things that what is the method of burning the coal and what kind of coal and from which coal field the coal has been obtained so as we have discussed that the properties of fly ash will largely depend upon the coal so let me have some idea of the composition of coal silicon dioxide is present in the range of 20 to 60 percent in bituminous coal 40 to 60 percent in subbituminous coal and 15 to 45 percent in lignite coal similarly aluminium oxide is lesser in the bituminous coal as compared to the subbituminous coal whereas iron oxide is present in lesser quantities in subbituminous and lignite coal as compared to the bituminous coal on the other hand calcium oxide is in the range of 1 to 12 percent in bituminous coal 5 to 30 percent in subbituminous coal and 15 to 40 percent in lignites whereas magnesium oxide is lesser than calcium oxide in all type of coals and minimum quantities of magnesium oxides have been found in bituminous coal and highest quantities of magnesium oxide are found in the lignite coal so based on this table we can conclude 
that the chemical constituents are variable in different type of coals. Now, let me come to the utilization of fly ash. Fly ash is a pozzolanic material. What is pozzolanic material? Pozzolanic material is a material that is having all cement like properties, but except binding properties. So, pozzolanic materials are defined as siliceous and aluminaceous material, which in itself possess little or no cementing properties. It chemically react with calcium hydroxide that is lime in the presence of water at ordinary temperature and form soluble compound comprises cementitious property similar to cement. So, in simple words we can say that if calcium hydroxide or lime is added to the fly ash then it can attain or it attains cementing properties and then it can be used as a cement. Fly ash produced in modern power stations of India is of good quality as it contains low sulfur and very low unburnt carbon. As on date, most of the new thermal power stations have set up dry fly ash evacuation and storage system to promote ash utilization in India. In this system, fly ash from electrostatic precipitators is evacuated through pneumatic system and stored in silos. Silos are nothing but big tanks over there it is stored. From silos, it can be loaded in open trucks or closed tankers. In the electrostatic precipitator, there are various rows depending upon the design of electrostatic precipitator. The field at the boiler end is called as first field and counted subsequently 2 to 3 onwards. The field at chimney end is called as left field. The coarse particles of fly ash are collected in first field of the electrostatic precipitator. The fineness of fly ash particles increases in subsequent fields of electrostatic precipitator. The fineness increases the utilization of fly ash. So, fineness is a very very important property. The fly ash is further divided into siliceous fly ash which is normally produced from anthracite or bituminous coal and has pozzolanic properties and having reactive calcium oxide less than 10 percent. Calcareous fly ash is produced from lignite or subbituminous coal and has both pozzolanic and hydraulic properties and having reactive calcium not less than 10 percent by mass. This table shows state wise fly ash generation and its utilization in India. From this table you will also find the number of thermal power plants in different states. The number of thermal power plants may have uh, increased in the coming years. So, the fourth column of this table shows that the total fly ash generation in India was 176 million tons and about 107 million tons of fly ash was utilized roughly as we have discussed earlier 60.97 percent fly ash was used. And in the last column you will find in some of the states fly ash utilization is very high and the examples of those are Delhi, Haryana and uh, Punjab. In these states fly ash utilization is more than 100 percent means some of the fly ash that was deposited in the previous years has been also utilized in these years. Whereas, in some of the states uh, like Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Bihar, the utilization is in the range of 20 to 30 percent. Whereas, in some of the states uh, like Gujarat, Rajasthan and West Bengal, utilization is in the range of 95 to 100 percent. Now, the question arises: what may be the major uses of the fly ash? This figure shows the major uses of fly ash as well as this figure shows that to what extent fly ash used in that particular activity. From this figure, you will find that about 
24 to 25 percent of the fly ash is used in cement making. About 5.85 percent of fly ash is used in mine filling. 8.3 percent of fly ash is used in brick making and tiles making. About 7 percent of the fly ash has been utilized in reclamation of low laying areas. About 6 percent of fly ash has been used in ash dike raising. About 2.83 percent of fly ash has been used in road making and making of flyovers. In recent years, utilization of fly ash has been started in the agriculture also as well as recently a notification has also been issued by the government of India that to a certain extent fly ash can be used in agricultural fields. A, a small quantity about 0.44 percent of fly ash is used in concrete making and about 0.02 uh, percent small quantity again has been used in hydropower sectors and other uses all other remaining uses that we will be discussing later on they constitute about 0.6 percent and still a significant quantity about 39 percent of the fly ash remain unutilized. Let me discuss different methods of fly ash utilization based upon the value fly ash utilization methods can be converted into four categories low value utilization medium value utilization high value utilization and use of fly ash as soil amendment among low value utilization of fly ash comes used as uh, minefields use of fly ash in embankments use as uh, backfills use of fly ash as highway base, use of uh, fly ash as soil stabilization, as structural fills, as water dam concretes, as harbor structures. So, these uses of fly ash come under the low value category. Then medium value uses of fly ash include making of lightweight aggregates, making of uh, fly ash concrete, making of pozzolana cement use in making of cellular concretes, making use of fly ash in making of bricks, grouting, slabs and wall panels and pre FAB blocks. The high value uses of fly ash include metal recovery as we have seen in the coal composition that coal contain uh, this uh, silica, alumina, iron oxide, calcium oxide, magnesium oxide etc. So, these all ultimately come in the fly ash. So, high value uses include metal recovery, magnetite, mineral wool, making of uh, plastic fillers, ceramics making, then low weight refractory making, then uh, recovery of uh, ferrous silicon and then making of exotic HTM tiles. As far as soil amendments are concerned, fly ash can be used for the soil conditioning of high clay soils, acid clay virgin soils and slightly lumped clay soil. This can also be used in manufacturing of granulated fertilizers. So, this is a very very important uh, flow chart that gives all possible uses of fly ash utilization. Now, let me discuss the use of fly ash in manufacturing of Portland Pozzolana cement. Primarily, the pulverized coal fly ash is utilized in PPC cement. The siliceous fly ash has properties which enable it to be used in PPC. As per Indian Standard 3812 Part 1 2013, pulverized fly ash specifications part 1 for use as pozzolana in cement, cement mortar and concrete. The term pulverized fuel ash is residue resulting from combustion of ground or powdered or crushed bituminous coal or subbituminous coal. This pulverized fuel ash is divided into two categories grade 1 for use in cement, mortar and concrete and in lime pozzolana mixture and for manufacture of Portland pozzolana cement. 
grade 2 fly ash is used for incorporation in cement mortar and concrete and in lime pozzolana mixture. This table shows the chemical properties which the fly ash should have for their use in cement, cement mortar and concrete. These uh, chemical properties have been taken from the IS 3812 part 1 2013. Dear student, I will suggest you please read this Indian standard 3812. So, you will get more and more idea about the use of fly ash in cement, cement mortar and concrete. This table shows the physical properties of fly ash which are required for uh, its use in cement, cement mortar and concrete. The properties are different for grade 1 and grade 2 fly ash and these have been taken from the again IS 3812 part 1 and 2. Please I will again request you to use this or to study this Indian standard. The pulverized coal ash can also be utilized in admixture in cement, mortar and in concrete. The quality of ash utilization for this purpose is again governed by Indian standard 3812 part 2 2013. Grade 2 fly ash with the lower threshold limit in physical properties can use as admixture in cement mortar and concrete. The disadvantages of this process is that early strength of concrete is lower and higher strength is developed by 50-60 days after. Some fine adjustment with aggregate water may increase strength in early days also. This method of fly ash utilization adopted for mass concrete work where initial strength does not matter. In second way, the fly ash is simply added to the concrete without replacing the OPC. This method provides strength at all ages of the concrete mass. Let me have a look on the use of fly ash in road em embankment, flyover and low laying area filling. The bottom ash and pore ash is slightly coarser in nature as compared to the electrostatic precipitator fly ash. It is very good for the road embankment, flyover filling and filling in low laying areas. The statutory authorities also focused on the utilization of ash in national highways. In Easter peripheral way, the ash from Dadri thermal power plant uh, that is in Uttar Pradesh and Badarpur thermal power plant were utilized. Fly ash replaces the soil in the embankment. Here when we use fly ash it means we are preserving one hour resource that is soil. The main issue arises is that the availability of the ash is proximity because if we have to transport from the dist uh, large distances uh, to this fly ash then the process will be costlier and become a hurdle in the ash utilization. The another use is sinospheres. Sinospheres are lightweight, inert, hollow sphere filled with air, light grey in color and mainly made of silica and alumina. Sinosphere gets separated from fly ash when fly ash is mixed with water. Due to lightweight, the sinosphere float on the surface and can easily accumulated. Large quantity of sinosphere are collected from thermal power plant having conventional wet slurry system for ash disposal. Sinospheres have low thermal conductivity, high electrical insulation, chemically inert, resistant to wear and tear and good sound proof characteristics. These properties make the sinospheres very valuable material and used in making the plastics, polymers, rubber, paints, refractory, automotive composites, aerospace coating, propeller blades, etc. Fly ash can also be used in geopolymer and use of bottom ash as replacement of reverse set. So, till now we have discussed about fly ash generation 
and its possible and potential uses and what quantities of the fly ash are at present used in our country. Now, let me have a look on the different rules that have been passed by the government of India. Rules applicable on ash generation, management and utilization. In exercise of the powers conferred by subsection 1, read with class 5 of subsection 2 of section 3 and section 5 of Environment Protection Act 1986 and in pursuance of the orders of the Honorable High Court Delhi stated above, the central government issued the fly ash utilization rules in 1999. These rules have been amended from time to time. The discussion on the every amendment is out of scope of this module. So, I will suggest the students, we will discuss the basic regulations or rules that were given in 1999 and you please have a look on different amendments. These all amendments are available on the website of Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. So, now let me see what rules have been made by the central government for the utilization of fly ash. Use of fly ash, bottom ash or pond ash in the manufacture of bricks and other construction activities. So, under the this is one category one rule and in this it has been given that no person shall within a radius of 50 kilometers from coal or lignite based thermal power plants manufacturing clay bricks or tiles or blocks for use in construction activity without mixing at least 25 percent of ash and here the ash includes fly ash, bottom ash or fond ash with soil on weight to weight basis. The second provision is the authority for ensuring the use of specified quantities of ash as given in para 1 above shall be the concerned regional officer of the state pollution control board or the pollution control committee as the case may be. In case of non compliance of this mixing of fly ash while making the bricks, the said authority in addition to cancellation of consent order issued to establish the brick kiln shall move the district administration for cancellation of mining lease also. The cancellation of mining lease shall be decided after due hearing. To enable the said authority to verify the actual use of ash, the thermal power plant shall maintain month wise records of ash made available to each brick in case of non availability of ash from thermal power plant in sufficient quantities as certified by the said power plant, the stipulation under para 1 shall be stably modified or may be waived or may be relaxed by the concerned state government or union territory government. Each coal or lignite based thermal power plant shall constitute a dispute settlement committee which shall include the GM of the thermal power plant and a representative of all India brick and tile manufacturer association. Such a committee shall ensure unhindered loading and transport of fly ash without any undue loss of time. Any unresolved dispute shall be dealt with by a state or union territory level committee to be set up by the state or union territory government comprising member secretary of the state pollution control board or pollution control committee, representatives of ministry of power, any unresolved dispute shall be dealt with by a state or union territory level committee to be set up by state or union territory government comprising member secretary of the state pollution control board or pollution control committee, representatives of ministry of power in the state or union territory government and a representative of the all India brick and tiles manufacturing association. Utilization of ash by thermal power plants, here some provisions are given. Every coal or lignite based thermal power plant shall make available ash for at least 10 years 
from the date of publication of this notification without any payment or any other consideration for the purpose of manufacturing ash based products such as cement, concrete blocks, bricks, panels or any other material or for construction of roads, embankments, dams, dikes or for any other construction activity. Every coal or lignite based thermal power plant commissioned subject to environmental clearance conditions stipulating the submission of an action plan for full utilization of fly ash shall within a period of 9 years from the publication of this notification phase out the dumping and disposal of fly ash on land in accordance with the plan as submitted. Such an action plan shall provide for 30 percent of the fly ash utilization within 3 years from the publication of these notification with further increase in utilization by at least 10 percent every year progressively for the next 6 years to enable utilization of the entire fly ash generated in the power plant at least by the end of 9th year and the progress made by the thermal power plant in this regard shall be reviewed after 5 years. Another provision is every coal or lignite based thermal power plant not covered by para 2 above shall within a period of 15 years from the date of publication of this notification phase out the utilization of fly ash in accordance with an action plan to be drawn up by the power plants. Such action plan shall provide for 20 percent of fly ash utilization without within 3 years from the date of publication of these notifications with further increase in utilization every year progressively for the next 12 years to enable utilization of the entire fly ash generation in the power plant. As per these guidelines by now all fly ash should have been utilized in one or the other activity, but you know we have studied just now that still about one third of the total fly ash generated is not utilized. All action plans prepared by coal or lignite based thermal power plants in accordance with sub para 2 and 3 of para 2 of this notification shall be submitted to central pollution control board or committee and concerned state pollution control board or committee and concerned regional office of the ministry of environment and forest within a period of 6 months from the date of publication of this notification. The central and state government agencies the state electricity board, the national thermal power corporation and the management of the thermal power plants shall facilitate in making available land, electricity and water for manufacturing activities and provide access to the ash lifting area for promoting and setting up of ash based production units in the proximity of the area where ash is generated by the power plant. Any of you whosoever has visited any thermal power plant you might have seen uh, some uh, brick making plant and uh, some cement making plant in the vicinity of thermal power plant. They are made over there they can make use of fly ash as raw material for making their products. Annual implementation report providing information about the compliance of provisions in this notification shall be submitted by the 30th day of April every year to the central pollution control board, concerned state pollution control board or committee and the concerned regional office of the ministry of environment and forests by the core or lignite based thermal power plants. Third category is specification for use of ash based products. Manufacture of ash based products such as cement, concrete blocks, bricks, panels or any other material or the use of ash in construction activity such as in road laying, embankment or use as landfill to reclaim low laying areas including backfilling in abandoned mines or pit heads 
or for any other use shall be carried out in accordance with specifications and guidelines laid by the Bureau of Indian Standards, Indian Bureau of Mines, Indian Road Congress, Central Board, Central Building Research Institute, Roodkey, Central Road Research Institute, New Delhi, Building Materials and Technology Promotion Council, New Delhi, Central Public Works Department, State Public Works Department and other central and state government agencies which are related to this. The Central Public Works Department, Public Works Departments in the states and union territory governments, development authorities, housing boards, National Highway Authority of India and other construction agencies including those in private sector shall also prescribe the use of ash and ash based products in their respective schedules of specifications and construction applications including appropriate standards and codes of practice within a period of four months from the publication of this notification. All local authorities shall specify in their respective building bylaws and regulation the use of ash and ash based products and construction techniques in building material roads, embankments or for any other use within a period of 4 months from the date of publication of this notification. During a study it has been found still people have some fear in their mind they think that the products which are produced making the use of fly ash instead of soil are having lesser strength or poor in quality or a poor substitute of the original one. So, in this regard more research is required and more social awareness is required so that people can make use of fly ash based products. Government of India Department of Science and Technology has made a center for fly ash research and management also called as C farm and this C farm is located at New Delhi. Uh, let me have a look on the activities of this uh, C farm and I will suggest the students please visit the website of C farm over there you will find out that what kind of research at present is going on for the fly ash utilization. This agency organize a number of uh, can say workshops seminars also those interested they can participate over there also. So, let me have a look on the various activities of C farm. The objectives of C farm that is center for fly ash research and management is to facilitate large scale adaptation of fly ash utilization and safe management technologies through capacity building and development of technology delivered mechanisms inter alia to promote and undertake research and development for in depth understanding of and value addition to fly ash and thus to position C farm as a leading resource center for fly ash use and management. So, these are the objectives of this C farm. Let me have a look on the different activities uh, which are going on at C farm. The activities include to undertake, promote and facilitate research and development in the area of fly ash, to provide technical support and facilitation for large scale utilization and management of fly ash to undertake and facilitate dissemination of information and awareness creation, to develop wide network of technology delivery mechanism through experts and institutes, to undertake and conduct short term courses, technical forms, trainings, technical seminars and conferences means with the objective of capacity building, to collaborate and facilitate scale up and large scale ad adaptation of fly ash technologies. And this uh, C farm provide scientific and technical guidance in the various fields of fly ash utilization. I will again suggest my students to please have a visit or please surf the website of C farm you will find lot of interesting material related to fly ash utilization management and R&D related to fly ash. 
in the end. To summarize this module, in this module we have studied about fly ash, its definition, sources of fly ash generation, physical and chemical properties of fly ash, state wise fly ash generation and state wise fly ash utilization, different type of usage of the fly ash and we have also studied about fly ash regulation passed by government of India. Here I will suggest the student, I will remind you that a number of amendments have been given to the 1990 rules. So, please read those, please read those rules so that you have a complete idea of fly ash management rules passed by the government of India and in the end we have studied about Sea Farm that is a agency co company that is created by government of India for the technology development, capacity building and R&D in the field of fly ash management. Thank you.